With the weather cooling down, I thought it would be a perfect time to start thinking about autumn ideas for my sketchbook. And if you're like me, you like a cosy afternoon where you can just sit and do some painting, then hopefully you're going to really enjoy this video. Also, I just really want to say thank you to everybody that has sent me some really lovely messages or sent me some really nice comments over on my video that I posted a couple of weeks ago. It was so nice just to sit through and read all of your messages and just thank you so much for all of your support and keeping with me even though I had been gone for quite a while. We're going to kick things off with a really simple idea and this one involves wet and wet with your watercolours and you know, you can create a piece using the colour scheme that you want to for this one. You don't have to follow mine, you don't have to include what I've included in mine, but it's just an idea to hopefully get you started. With this one, I sketched out a circle, I drew around one of my rolls of tape, and then I included some flowers either side of the circle because I wanted it to encompass this circle that I was wanting to create as a mini galaxy or a little planet, something along those lines. And I chose flowers that are blooming at the moment in my garden. They're ones that I planted a couple of years ago and they just come up really nicely every single year and they're a really nice one for some autumnal interest in my garden. So I wanted to create a painting using those and thinking about those sorts of colour schemes. So I have some Japanese Anamone, I think it's called. I'm not entirely sure of the pronunciation of this. I've got it in my garden and I planted it a few years ago and it comes up really beautifully every autumn at around this sort of time of year, so really early autumn. And it's a really delicate pink flower and it just looks so, so pretty amongst all of the green foliage that I have in my garden. I'll include a little shot so you can see what it looks like in my garden. I'm really, really pleased with how my garden is coming along and it's such a nice space to sit in. And it was completely just dirt when we moved in. There was nothing and this is what we've created so far. So I'm really, really happy with how my garden is coming along and I think these these plants really complement my planting scheme and I just really really like them so I wanted to create a piece of artwork using those and I really wanted to make this piece really simple it's not it's not a really overly complicated piece it's that nice circle in the center and then you could outline it with whatever flowers or foliage you really like at this time of year now I started off with the circle inner and I wanted to go in with sort of some nice deep blues and purples and some pinks. And I wanted them to all blend in with one another. So I used the wet and wet technique. I laid down my water first really, really lightly, just so it wouldn't then bleed into the flowers. Wherever I'd put that water, that would hold my watercolor. And then I went ahead building up those blues and the purples, the pinks, and allowed them to blend and mold together. And it does create this really nice sort of galaxy feel. And I just really love how the flowers frame that center point. Once the center has completely dried and you've got all of the colors in there that you want to include in your watercolor piece, then that's when you're going to start thinking about your flowers. And for my flowers, I just use varying degrees of pigment on my paintbrush to get different tones in for those Japanese anemones. And I'm really happy with how they turned out. To define those flowers a little bit further, I then wanted to include some fine liner. So I added additional details to my flowers and gave them a little bit of texture on the petals before then moving back into that central circle area where I knew I wanted to add a little bit of gold leaf and I wanted this to look quite sort of natural where it might pick it up. Once everything was fully dried on the central part, once all of that gold leaf had dried off, I also then went in with a white pen and added some stars and I didn't want this to look too sort of realistic. I wanted it to look quite 
playful so I added in quite a few little stars. I'm just really happy with this little piece. It was such a relaxing piece of artwork to create. Let me know in the comments what autumn flowers or foliage you would add to yours and what sort of colour scheme you would go for. Oh I forgot to say as well for all of the watercolour pieces that I'm creating today I'm using my Paul Rubens watercolour paints. I really enjoy using these paints. They're perfect paints to use for a sketchbook because they're not too expensive but they do create a really nice outcome and I just really really enjoy using them and they are paints that I go to use quite frequently so I would recommend them and I will add a link to those as well in the description box if you're interested in um, checking them out. When I was thinking about this idea I was really thinking about all of the different types of autumnal things that I really enjoy and I wanted to include as many of them as I could on a page but I also wanted to stick to quite a constricted colour palette so I decided to stick to just a few paints within my set and I did put them all down at the bottom of my page just to make sure I didn't deviate from those colours at all. I could mix them and go back and forth between all of these colours but I didn't want to go beyond that for this piece and I'm really happy that I did stick to that because I'm really pleased with the final outcome. So this piece is full of lots of autumnal illustrations and things that I just really, really love. So we have got a bobble hat and we've got a cinnamon whirl because oh my goodness, they are my absolute favourites. I absolutely love a cinnamon whirl or a swirl, whatever you want to call it, but they are one of my absolute favourites. We've got a pie, I'm imagining an apple pie, something sweet, I do like a sweet pie, and then a few different types of pumpkins and squash, a nice hot drink, maybe something like a chai latte or hot chocolate, a candle, I love burning candles, a nice cosy scarf, you'll always find me in a scarf, when it gets a lot cooler I'll all be, always be wrapped up in a scarf, a nice book or a sketchbook and then we've got a really really nice um, mushroom on there as well we do love a mushroom so I've got lots of things included on this page and for this one I just want you to think about adding in your favorite things for this time of year and then simplifying them and putting them into an illustration and trying to fit as many of those on the page as you can and it just turns out as such a nice illustration and such a nice way for you to celebrate this time of year and and some of your favourite things. And using a really limited palette I think makes this piece all cohesive, it makes everything come together and I would recommend this as a nice painting exercise to do, thinking about colour theory or using you know your harmonious colours and working on all of those together to create one piece. This was a really fun little painting to create and I would highly recommend trying one out for yourselves. And again, let me know what you would include on your illustration page of your favourite things for autumn or for... So yeah, I'm really pleased with this little painting here. I think that is adorable and I might include it as a free print if anybody is interested. So I have just started a buy me a coffee Again, I'll add the link in the description box if you are interested in supporting me. But I was thinking of different ways of rewarding you guys and I was thinking perhaps I would do monthly free downloadable prints or something along those sorts of lines. Let me know in the comments what types of things you would like to see within the buy me a coffee. And again, if you do support me, thank you so, so much. It will really helped me out and it honestly means so much. This next idea goes in line with collections again but thinking a little bit more on sort of the spooky side and I was thinking about lots of different potions and bottles and having those as a little collection for anybody that 
is a big fan of Halloween and they do enjoy watercolour painting so I wanted to include this one as well in today's video because it is a really fun one to create. And for this one I did use my Jackson's masking fluid which I need to make a repurchase of because it was a little bit dry however I have had this for such a long time and it's no surprise really that it is now starting to dry out a little bit. I applied my masking fluid with an adjustable ruling pen which I believe I also bought from Jackson's and it worked really well actually using the ruling pen for the application of the masking fluid. It runs really smoothly with that and I actually got a really nice line whereas some of the little squeezy bottle applicators sometimes they could come out maybe a little bit too thick but this I found I had a lot more control especially for the glass bottles because I just wanted to try and get in sort of the highlights around the edges of the bottle without it being too thick or cumbersome. So with this one you do have to factor in a little bit more time for the drying of the masking fluid. Once that masking fluid has completely dried naturally you can then paint over it without any issues whatsoever. But for this one I just thought it'd be really fun thinking about all of the different colours of the potions in the bottles, thinking about the reflections on the bottles and just having fun with this piece. I really really enjoyed this one and I don't always really create watercolours like this so it was, it was quite fun creating something different, a nice illustrative style and I would just recommend doing something out of your comfort zone. So if you've not created something like this in a while then maybe it's time to brush off those paints and give it a go for the colours of the potions inside of the bottles. I wanted to use the wet and wet technique again because I wanted some of the potions within those bottles to look like they were sort of swirled with, with lots of different colours in there. Maybe they had sort of an iridescent feature to it. I should have added some of my iridescent Winsor & Newton medium to this but I, I didn't even think about that. Maybe that's something I could always add in later at another time. Yeah I just really really enjoyed this one and it gave me Haunted Mansion vibes whilst I was painting it and I absolutely love riding on the Haunted Mansion at Disney World so I loved this one and yeah I just I think that if you're wanting to create something for autumn and you're wanting it to be sort of slightly spooky then this one could be a really fun one to create. It's not as quick of a process as the first two paintings but I think it's definitely worth sticking with so you can create a really nice collection of potions in your sketchbook. As always, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up. It really does help me out if you guys do give it a big thumbs up. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye guys. <laughs>